Hey, and welcome to Mighty Fine Shindig, a Firefly podcast from Common Room Radio. I'm Liz Stevens. I'm Sarah Kate Bazant. I'm Vinton Bain. I'm Alistair Stevens. And I'm thinking about growing a big black mustache. I'm kind of a traditionalist. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It'll go great with that baller bowler hat that yeah. you're wearing. Is it a baller, baller bowler hat? hat? I decided to go it's western today bowler. with my It's hat. a baller bowler. Yeah. <laughs> a baller bowler. I like, I like it very it. much. Yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, hey, Alistair, what's up? Hey, what's going on? Hey, not much. I you want to talk about Firefly? Yeah, you did. Yeah, I would really yes. like to talk about Firefly. Just Excellent. happened to stop by and Wonderful. here you all were recording a podcast. Yeah. It's true, yeah. So, Meant to be. As Serendipitous. You know, I carry my extra mic with me and mm-hmm. just jammed it into your mixing board. <laughs> it's that I'm doing this. Which yes, one do you we can't watch? get rid of me. I'm here for the next hour and I'm going to be talking about Firefly. <laughs> I haven't even watched it. I'm going to be doing it all from memory. I've actually never seen an episode of a TV show. <laughs> what, what is TV? What are TV? We don't have that in Scotland. Amazing how lucky I've been <laughs> some of my wild guesses. <laughs> but we were originally talking about getting me on Mighty Fine Shindig back when we did Shindig. Yes. The two episodes I asked for were Shindig mm-hmm. and War Stories, and I just happened to be here for this one, so I think serendipity yeah. is exactly the word. It worked Precisely. out perfectly. Mm-hmm. Yep. wasn't even an an extended invitation and we just realized no nope. hey wait war <laughs> stories you should sit down and record i like it so we're doing the thing so we're doing war stories this week the 10th episode of firefly Nailed i it. do that every time like what number are we on <laughs> the next one in the netflix queue is where we are everybody I looked it up so many every time i'm doing the show notes i have to look it up again yeah even though i just listened to it say what it was well it gets confusing because if you look online they'll put here's the order they aired it yeah here's, here's the, the broadcast order, order. order. that's yeah. not what There's i want like three i need different like yeah, orders exactly these episodes it's it gets preposterous. very confusing so tell us about this episode Vin. so this episode is directed by james contner i'm assuming is how you say that mm-hmm. who directed an episode of miami Vice, a few episodes of 21 Jump Street, an episode of the original Flash, which I enjoyed finding out, sure. <laughs> Lois and Clark, X-Files, Smallville, did 20 episodes of Buffy and yep. 13 of Angel, wow. mm-hmm. and would go on to direct episodes of Star Trek Enterprise and an episode of Dollhouse. Huh. So nice little career there with a lot of things that I enjoy. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of Whedon. Yeah. Tons mm-hmm. of Whedon. Just all the Whedon. <laughs> and yeah. It's but really. Written. But really. Has he been on Angels true. of S.H.I.E.L.D. yet? <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting, I guess. Yeah. It's written by Cheryl Kane, who hasn't done very much, but worked on thir- all 13 episodes of Firefly as a story editor, actually. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, she wrote an additional script for Firefly as well called Dead or Alive that never got filmed due to the show's cancellation. Uh, she also wrote for the TV show Roswell and a weird series yeah. called Threat Matrix, which just weirded Threat me out. Matrix? I've never heard of it, but the cover of it just looks like it's completely ripped off of The Matrix. Like, they use the oh, same font and everything. Cool. That's really so, weird. What? That's all that she has on her IMDb or Wikipedia, so not much huh. there for how much she worked on Firefly. Did y'all watch Roswell? No. I, I did didn't. with your sister. Yeah, I did with my sister, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I yeah. remember it being on, but I never knew anything about it. It had... It was quite interesting a lot of times. There was a lot about it that I liked. So I, I mean, it's one of those recommend... CW shows that was like, it I mean, it was it was aliens, is. right? Like all the kids were aliens. They were Teenage hatched aliens. from alien eggs or something. They didn't have yep. belly buttons, I think is true. Maybe. I, don't I remember. forget. Somebody I had a handprint. That, that might be Kyle X. That might also be Roswell. No, Roswell was the handprint one. Handprint. Yeah. That was like, how you knew they were aliens because of their handprints. Anyway, it's been years. Yep. Couldn't name a single person on that show. <laughs> or what happened in it, frankly. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Wait, you know, I, was Catherine Heigl in that show? Yes. Catherine yeah, Heigl was it. in that show. <laughs> You're absolutely right. That's the first so thing the she did to whatever did. you knew about Roswell that you couldn't name anyone in it turned out to not be true. Yeah, yeah. all right. Here's what I know about Roswell. <laughs> Aliens, handprints, Catherine Heigl. <laughs> And then maybe they do have belly buttons. They might have, belly, they have buttons. belly buttons. It's, yes. belly buttons it's impossible to determine. Undetermined at this point. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned for the upcoming Roswell podcast. Do they have belly buttons? Goals. It'll be a very, very short podcast. Five minute confirmation discussion on the belly button issue. Well, we watched it. And there they were. You don't need to limit that to Roswell. You can do every CW show. <laughs> Just a quick belly button check. Uh-huh. Because good will God find knows. Out eventually. On yes. the CW, you're going to find out because everyone takes That's their shirt off sure. and you have oh, to be super hot. Oh, but is the hot. camera always positioned in such a way that you never actually see their navel? Like, are there going to be some shows where it's impossible to determine We're just going to have to do like a patron a exclusive button? and address this question with, I guess with factual so. evidence. Clearly. What has happened? <laughs> what podcast am I on? <laughs> Well, I don't know. Right. I didn't see a single belly button this entire episode. So, uh, canon, supernatural, no belly buttons. <laughs> All right. Circling so, back. So, Firefly. Back. Yes. The idea for this episode started with the question, 
what if Zoe had to choose to save Mal or Wash? And Cheryl Kane and Joss Whedon discussed that and came up with this episode. Okay, well. It's an interesting approach to answering that question by yeah. effectively sidelining Zoe. Yeah, yeah. The weight of that discussion on Wash and Mal. Yeah. It's real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is going to be such an interesting episode to talk about because it's a good episode. It's it's I mean, it's paced well. I like watching it. Mm-hmm. It's compelling. I don't quite understand what they're trying to do, though. You and do like I this think, episode, though? Yeah, I enjoy watching this episode. Do you like this episode? I like this episode. Do you yeah. like this episode, Alistair? I like it overall. I think Contner gives it a good yeah. sense of its shape. He, he's good mm-hmm. with pacing. Mm-hmm. He's good with structure. I think it's got all the elements. It's interesting that, that the writer was a story editor because it feels very much like something that has been composed from pieces mm. that are present within Firefly, yeah. mm-hmm. but not necessarily stitched together as well as they could be. Mm-hmm. Huh. We get nods to things more than we get uh, a really powerful core narrative. I think for me that's what's sure. missing. But broadly, sure. I don't think Sarah, I like this episode. Like you don't think you like no, it? No, I don't think I do. I think this might be one of my least favorite episodes. Thematically, because... it feels kind of dark. Like, we were watching it with Lily, who's sure. 11. And it made her uncomfortable. She left. Mm. Yeah. yeah, well, I yes, mean, this you, yeah, torture darker, is not fun violent. to watch. Yeah, yep. yeah. Hmm. Well, let's. why don't we just start it out? Let's start our scene-by-scene scene breakdowns and just try to try to work on through it yeah so i have one interesting note that i learned from the commentary that's not going to fit anywhere else in the discussion so i'll bring it up here and it's that alan tudyk pointed out that they only shot the episode and most of the episodes to make it look like zoe's taller than him when in actuality he's six foot tall and she's five ten but if you look at all those Uh, scenes she definitely looks two or three inches taller than him that's really interesting they were just trying to do that on purpose if it just happened that way but he pointed out the company he's like i don't know why i always look short than her my mom actually called me and said why are you so short once when she was watching the show (laughs) (laughs) i did not realize pretty tall that alan tudyk was that tall (laughs) no i didn't either now on to our cold open (laughs) okay yeah Time for some thrilling heroics. We open up with Shepard Book talking to Simon, uh, asking him if he knows yeah. anything about Shan Yu, which is, in Simon's words, a psychotic dictator who Book says is more of a warrior poet who wrote volumes on torture and how to get to know a man by finding out where his limits of human endurance lie. <laughs> Simon criticizes it as sadistic garbage, and Book asks if maybe this is why people were torturing his sister in such a way because they were fans of this and wanted to get to know who she really was. Mm -hmm. Mm. Which seems like a weird theory, though, right? Well, the quote from Book that he attributes to Shan Yu, live with Mm. a man 40 years, share his house, his meals, speak on every subject, then tie him up and hold him over the volcano's edge, and on that day you will finally meet the man. I kind of hate the recurring Shan Yu beat uh uh-huh. this episode i don't like the way that it's used in the cold open i don't mm-hmm. like the way that we point to ward river with mm-hmm. it and i don't like the way that niska brings it back later mm-hmm. does this have any resonance any substance for you guys do you see anything of value in this the discussion? interesting thing for me that i find in it is that book knows a lot about this thing that the only person that the other person that we know for a fact knows about it is niska in mm-hmm. this criminal mm-hmm. mind and it almost gives a, a, a glimpse into something of books past to me. Maybe he tortured people. <laughs> maybe he knows oh, something about so. us because Could of be. his, yeah. his past criminal life. And maybe there was torture involved. Mm-hmm. That's all I can think is that they're trying to give us th- that little bit of backstory or, or just raise more questions about book because they do that every time. Mm-hmm. But it seems really, I guess, elaborate and mm-hmm. heavy handed to do that when it doesn't, when we don't ever get a payoff for right. it, first of mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. And secondly, it just seems so weird to me in this opening scene because because it does foreshadow niska and Mm -hmm. and niska's torture sure but i don't understand how because it was so specific it was those cuts into her brain that they were talking and surgical cuts into her brain so there's no reason to think that the experience for her would have been torturous or painful Mm -hmm. certainly the fact that her what did he say her amygdala was stripped Uh uh-huh well he said that they cut in over over and over over again again. that's true i mean it's not like torturous pain wise it's at least torturous like that's not something you want that's an evasion sure yeah (laughs) oh that is very true it, it, I think I'm just trying to say that it missed for me. I couldn't yeah. quite yeah, it's put kind these of a pieces weird together. Scene. I'm not sure what I'm, I'm not sure what we're trying to accomplish here, and it does feel weird. And le- I mean, like if it's like what you said, Liz, and we're trying to like foreshadow Niska, like we already did that in the previously on Firefly. It's true. Like it was right there. We saw him. Well, yeah. and then why not just give this quote about holding the man over the volcano to Niska? 
Because yeah, Nuska's the crazy pants, yeah. and then it's fine, and it works for us, and we see, oh, he's going to torture them. Great. Mm-hmm. Did but he it's mention Sean Yu in the train job? I couldn't remember if we I had already. I don't think so. so. No, okay, so. all right. No. I wasn't sure if my brain was tricking uh, to me. To me, it's just that Book is a well-read man, and whether it has anything to do with his past or not, this is, seems like a philosopher-type mm-hmm. person. Of course, it's crazy pants philosopher, but sure. we have those in real life, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are people that did horrible things and wrote philosophical books mm-hmm. about them, but... To me, it's just he's really, very, really well read. Sees a torturous thing having happened to River, and just starts questioning the motives behind the government here. And I like that line where he talks about the government being just a group of people, usually ungoverned. Sure. Yes, <laughs> yeah. That's mm-hmm. a good one. I like that line a lot. Is there anything in the thematic landscape of Firefly that speaks to this idea that character is revealed only in the most dire exigencies of fate and torment? Well, I certainly don't think so because I mean, like you hear that, and immediately what I think is, "Wow, I'm doing friendship wrong." Then, right? because yeah. like I've never held anybody over right. a volcano. Exactly. I mean, I granted, disagree. I've not known any of you for 40 years, but I feel like I know the woman who Liz is, and I know the man who Vinton yeah. is, and I am learning the man who Alistair is, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, I don't feel as the... I, I don't know. It's... I really agree with Simon whenever he's like, it's just a distant crap yeah. Yeah. with yeah. with florid prose or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I feel like which is a great you line. both those options, so mm-hmm. they know that this is going to be taken a certain mm-hmm. way, and so they give you sure. Simon's option because, like, they know yeah, people are going to react yeah. that way, at least some. I do wish there was more of a payoff for this when it comes to people actually being tortured, that we'd see some kind of character turn and be like, oh, this we're seeing something new in this character, which we do see some cool things in characters, but I don't think it's anything new. I think we those are people, they're still the people we knew. So do we're you think that this revelation. is supposed to be foreshadowed whenever we're seeing Mal and Wash being tortured and Mal is being seemingly reprehensible, saying all this stuff about like sleeping with Zoe and like trying to get under Wash's skin and all that? Is Are we supposed to think, are we supposed to like remember this Sean Yu quote and think, oh, this is what this realization think- about Mal is. But I know that we immediately are given you know, Wash talking to Zoe and being like, he kept me from breaking because right. he was getting mm-hmm. under yeah. my skin and all this. But is there supposed to be, are we supposed to like... I don't think we're supposed to. Okay. I think it would have been brilliant had they done it yeah. that way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's all right. I agree. Because that would have made sense. It almost... would have been like, I mean, it's it's Chekhov Sean Yu quote, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, if you're going to use it, then it needs to, there needs to be some yeah. follow through. Yeah. But... But no, I don't think anybody's identity was any more revealed because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if anything, the fact that he was being so reprehensible in the mm-hmm. beginning was supposedly some new insight into his character because we're used to him actually being, you know, good underneath yeah. this mm-hmm. this rougher exterior. But then, of course, we find that he was, in fact, being the Mal version of Noble, yeah. which is not a surprise to us. It's just... That's what he does every week. Yeah. Yes, that's what he does every week. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and and you do find out that Wash is willing to fight for this too, and willing to step up. But we all knew that Wash had that. We in knew him. that yeah. too. Yeah, there was mm-hmm. nothing hiding that. Yeah. <laughs> The one thing that the quote does, the one thing that the recurring discussion on Sean Yu does, I think, is to draw a clear line of delineation between the forces of order and government and our heroes. Because whether we're dealing with Sean Yu, who was a dictator, or we're right. dealing with the Alliance, or we're dealing with the underworld power of Niska, mm-hmm. okay. we're dealing with organization. We're dealing with order. Mm-hmm. And okay. our heroes get to stand against that. They get to stand outside that tyrannical power. Then why Probably choose that quote? Yeah. Yes. That we, <laughs> yeah, we spend a long time in this because cold of open how on this. It's the 10th episode of Firefly. Yeah. yeah. We have this already. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. It is, I think, a good <laughs> book and Simon scene. You do I think like, so? I like their energy together. I, I don't like the content, but I like those two actors together and I like the dynamic a little bit. And sure. We get good Simon, yeah. I think. It is good Simon. Yeah. I do agree. Good, competent Simon in his element. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like my respect for him has grown and has I, I've kept it since the Ariel episode, which is mm-hmm. nice. I like that he, he doesn't go back to being kind of bumbling Simon on the ship. Right. Now we really see him, mm-hmm. that he's moving forward with the information that he has yeah. and, and that well, he's and he in his element again. he has that he needs now to, yes. to be you know, moving toward and achieving his goal. Right. right. Sure. So. so in our cold open, we cut to the return of Niska, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. who's torturing a man, talking to him about getting to know him and quoting Sean Yu. And then one of his men come in and say that Malcolm Reynolds and crew may be in the area. Mm-hmm. And he commands his man to bring him Malcolm Reynolds and asks his victim if he is familiar with the work of Sean Yu. And that's maybe our shortest cold open. Yeah, uh, it was, it's a pretty short one. <laughs> that's weird because it felt such, like it took forever. Right, but we've had <laughs> such long cold opens. We I mean, yeah. have had so long ones. Times, but mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, this is just two short scenes with sh- short bit of dialogue and that's it. <laughs> huh. Gosh, I feel like we could have done it even shorter if you had just had just the Niska scene. Like, we didn't mm. need Simon and Book, I feel like. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I, I do feel like they're just trying to, maybe with the Simon and Book, trying to tie it to the last episode. Uh, they, they now have... Uh, 
uh, right, Rivers files. Where we are. They're looking sure. over those things. They're discussing that. That makes sense. And without that, they're not really talking about that again, mm-hmm. at least th- throughout yeah. this episode. So they're, no. maybe they're just trying to connect those things a little bit. Maybe that it's a sense. last minute addition, and that's why it feels a little jarring. Hmm. That's possible. Maybe. I would have liked to maybe see Book in that shepherding role, trying to look after Simon in that scene, knowing how upset he must be to see what was done to his sister, mm-hmm. rather than philosophizing. Up, <laughs> philosophizing torture. Yeah. yeah, which really was not helpful. No. It's all the more frustrating because we come out of the credits, and we'll discuss this in a second, I guess. Yeah. We come out of the credits into a scene that, for me, is the heart of Firefly. This yes. should have been the cold open. This yes. should have yeah. been. I this mean, this is, is amazing. a thesis statement for the yeah. entire yeah. show, and I love it so yeah. much. So it's weird to get these disjointed scenes right up front yeah. and then move into what seems like yeah. the core of the show. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, we get, our, we get our music, and we cut right into Kaylee chasing River through yes. the ship laughing because River stole her apple. Mm-hmm. And Mal and Anara are discussing arrangements for her next client. Mal wants to meet the client. Anara wants privacy for the client. We get that great line from Mal. I love the pitter-patter of tiny feet and huge combat boots. Shut up! <laughs> She's so happy. She's such a dad. She stole my apple! <laughs> Jane bought a whole crate of them. Yeah, and this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and when Kaylee gets her apple, we get that line. No power in the verse can stop me which, which is come a back great up. one and I love I actually love that that does come back up we'll talk yeah. about oh, that yeah. when it comes back <laughs> up but uh, then you see Zoe and Wash enjoying their apples, and we find out that Jane has generously gave them to the crew, probably because he feels bad be- for betraying them. Probably feel <laughs> yeah. a little guilty. Probably yeah. assuaging some guilt. They don't here. know, probably so. but he's trying to pay off a little bit of the guilt there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kaylee inquires why Mal and Zoe always cut their apples, and Zoe explains how their platoon was tricked and attacked with trap explosive apples. One of the most horrible things, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was a horrible really story. Sad. It was yeah. very tragic. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that story. Yeah. It's, a it's good, just yeah. a good story. Yeah, these people have been in war. They're not yeah. they're gonna have these stories. They're gonna have mm-hmm. these traumatic things that where they do things differently now mm-hmm. because of the experiences they've been through. Yeah. It introduces one of the core elements of the episode, which is the sharing of stories as a means of yes. creating unity, mm-hmm. particularly in this case between right. Zoe and Mal. I love it. I think mm-hmm. it's yeah. so good. It's so I love this dark. part. It is dark. Yeah. It's very but dark. I think that Zoe beautiful. handles it really, really well. And then yeah. Wash suddenly decides that he needs to sugarcoat this entire thing for everyone on the crew and start well, talking about rainbows and yeah. bunnies. I, I feel and... like that's in character, though. I feel like I mean, he, there's this horrible story here about people's heads exploding, nothing left but ribs. Sure. And he's like, oh, let's not talk. Why, why are we discussing? This is awful. <laughs> See, and this is actually my favorite wash in this episode. Yeah. Mm. Because I think that this is when he, I think his discomfort with the story, it reminds me of when he says, I don't recall who he was talking to, but he, but, uh, he said that I can worry about you because Zoe's out uh, on a mission and whenever she's out on a job, I worry anyway, so it's not out of my way. Mm-hmm. I, I think that when he hears these stories, He's reminded of all the times that he was not there to protect Zoe. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't need protection. I know that. But when you love but someone, Wash you, know, but when you, love someone you just okay. want to be there in those moments. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. And maybe that's more protecting himself and his own. Maybe so. I don't want to say ego, but I, mm, it's well, a little bit Well, and I could ego. see there, there's a little bit of like the ego there because when you're a masculine man, your society tells you you're there to protect your wife. You are the strong man. Sure. Mm-hmm. But he's a weaker man married to this super strong war. woman, this warrior woman. Mm-hmm. Right. And I could see that being part of messing with his ego a little bit. Like, I'm supposed to be strong and protect her, but she could kill me with her pinky finger. I got nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that a part of Wash and Zoe's marriage i mean we're talking about that from the perspective of 21st century people living in the united states where i think right. that is a cultural assumption have we seen evidence of that assumption of that dynamic in firefly to date We've i mean we know that he worries about her yeah does he feel the urge to protect her does he and and is that specifically for wash part of a traditionally masculine feminine dynamic there have been a few comments that he's made i know about uh keeping his wife safe how he always worries when she's right. out mm-hmm. things like this uh and then she he obviously talks about how strong she is pretty right. often, but it's usually all in, in jest but i think when jest is where you really let out your true emotions often oh sure, sure and so i think maybe there is that hidden but this episode's really trying to pull more of it out and then once we've gone this far it is you can't always look back and go was that really there? Are you pulling a lot out? <laughs> right. Well, and again, I just feel like Wash and Zoe change episode to episode. Really I cannot peg who down who them. they are. Yeah. And here's just another time where another writer's got a hold of them. And Wash especially is just a, almost a brand new character. If it wasn't Alan Tudyk, if it was yeah. anybody yeah. else in this role who didn't have such a strong sense of self and who had brought so much into so so that it was, you know, Wash as we yeah. know Wash, then I would be very confused by it, I think. I mean, I still am, but... Right. I mean, I feel like it's... 
he just seems to be like whining throughout this entire episode, which is so, is it whiny. seems uncharacteristic mm. of Wash. Like Wash is supposed to be one of our supporting characters. Like, well, he's, and usually he's like, very self-assured. Yes. Like, yeah. I mean, like he knows what he's good at. He yes. knows that he has the love of his wife. Like whenever we were right. dealing with Saffron being on board, like he, yes. I mean, like their relationship wasn't even remotely called into question. Why is he suddenly questioning the relationship that she has with Mal? Well, I don't, I feel like they have put seeds in there, but the yes. problem is that they put seeds in there and then instead of gradually really building yes they put seeds in there and then gave you level 10 that's yeah. absolutely right. and literally when they first planted that seed it was that um that first scene that we saw in the pilot mm-hmm. when the one that you like so well where it's them at the end of the hall yeah and we've got like that voyeuristic view of them talking. absolutely mm-hmm. yeah and he's saying why don't you just tell mal this yeah. time that we need time off ship mm-hmm. that was nine episodes ago though yeah. full episodes and so i feel like had this one come closer to maybe that scene it would have followed more naturally, right. but instead we've been showing with the not everybody gets me and Zoe right, right. away. Mm-hmm. But then we've learned okay how the dynamic works between Mal and Zoe mm-hmm. and Wash. That that Wash is very assured that their marriage is good. We've seen them together several times where we really liked them. Yeah. So maybe it's just too late in the game to do this. I don't know. I just don't buy it. Like, it just feels really mm-hmm. inauthentic to me. It doesn't bother me as much. Okay. I do see those points as valid points, but I, it feels a little bit more natural to me. And I think it's just because I know that when you're making a series, this is still season one. Yeah, that they, is They've true. only had so much time to put stuff in. This is longer episodes. They've done a lot. They, they have a lot of characters to deal with. So it's hard to put these things in when you have, right. you're focused on this character, then this character, then yeah. this character. And so finally, Wash is having a, his moment in the spotlight kind mm-hmm. of episode. Part of the problem, though, I think, is that we come into the episode with this conflict already established. We have time and space right up front to have some kind of inciting incident. We could actually see the discussion between Wash and Zoe where they disagree about what they're to do with the the rest of the medical supplies. We could see Wash actually pitch his idea to Zoe. Mm -hmm. That would be so much better. That would be a lot better. Mm -hmm. But then it would be fresh and immediate and we would actually see the seeds of it. We would see right. the, the, right. the beginning of this conflict and mm-hmm. we don't. So we yeah. have to backfill that exposition mm-hmm. while we're trying to handle, you're absolutely right, Liz, I think a version of Wash that is completely unfamiliar yes. at this point. Yeah. But as it is, we start the conflict right at Mal walking in and saying, that wasn't a bad idea, Wash, eliminating the middleman. That would have helped out with selling the medicine. But it's not as good as you might think because a lot of people are middlemen and they don't like being eliminated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Wash gets upset because he realizes that And you see this later when he's talking to Zoe in the next scene that Zoe told him that she didn't get a chance to share his plan with Mal, but turns out she shared it and he rejected it. And she was sparing Wash's feelings by saying, oh, I just didn't have time to mention it or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. And Wash feels like she didn't fight for him and then lied to him about it. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me of of that conversation that they had together? Wash says... So when you said you didn't get a chance to tell the captain my idea, Zoe says, "Mm mm-hmm. Wash says, what you actually meant was you told him my idea, he rejected it out of hand, and you didn't argue the point or even give it another thought. And she says that she did argue, right? She says, I gave. And then Wash replies, and then came the lying to me about it, which for me is sort of the highlight of this little adventure. Hmm. And then we're into bickering pretty much after that. Yeah, and just bickering about it. I I do like you get a little bit of Wash that we we know. They're in the middle of this argument, and she says, is there any way I'm going to get out of this with honor and dignity? He says, you're pretty much down to ritual suicide, lammy toes. (laughs) Just goofing, you know, and I like that. That's Wash. Is there any way I get out of this with honor and dignity? See, I just don't like this Well, and I don't like whenever he says, could you have an opinion of your own, please? Like, it's just... That's a killer, yeah. Yeah, I think that that for me is when Mm -hmm. I... I mean, like, gosh, if if Wash were to always be reacting in this big a way, mm-hmm. anytime that Zoe talked to Mal, I'd lie to him too. I wouldn't tell him stuff. I mean, like, Absolutely. if he's going to be a giant baby about it, <laughs> I also am going to be working to spare his feelings. But it could be that it's not every time. This is probably an accumulation of what we've seen, mm-hmm. and this is now him blowing up over the course of yeah. things sure, happening. But we're not right. seeing that. We're having to read that yeah, into we're it, which just is not, the problem. Yeah, we're sort okay. of put, like, in media res as right. far as, like, this fight is concerned. And it just... Mm-hmm. This in particular feels to me like one of the pieces of evidence that suggests that this episode was written by a story editor because this is connective tissue back to our previous adventures. Yeah. But oh, what it's sure. not is present and urgent and important. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I don't believe that Wash would be this upset yeah. over what is an economic arrangement. Yeah. Sure, they're making money. They could make more money. And it but sounds like he just sort of a ton of right. money. It's not urgent like, to wash. It's not a point yeah. of principle. It's undermotivated. Yeah, it is. That is yes, yeah. that's, that's exactly that's yeah. a good point. Uh, Especially is, for such a big fight. Yeah, mm. there is that moment where he asks her what she thinks, and she says, "Well, the cap," and he says that long line of Chinese, which 
translates to oh, yeah. all the planets in space stuffed into my butt. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Was I never asking line. what the captain thought? <laughs> Which is pretty normal of, of an argument. I feel like we've all been in an argument where that's happened. We're like, sure. well, what do you think? And then someone says, well, this, that's not what I'm asking you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's a normal thing there. Uh, they they argue about Zoe agreeing with Mel. I do like that Wash says, I'm a large, semi-muscular man. I can take it. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's a funny Wash <laughs> line. Again, there's wash a lot line. of good Wash in there. And then we do get this line where it says... Because this marriage need what this marriage needs is one more shouting match, and then Wash says no. What this marriage needs is one less husband. Right now, it's kind of crowded. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about that before, and right. like we do agree on that point to an extent. Yeah. To an extent, I think that uh, again, back in that first episode, I expected more to get us to this episode. Basically, yeah. I thought that we would always see how this dynamic caused some friction between Wash and so good, but it never but did. From t- right. episode right. two to episode nine, exactly. This, this Everyone's feel, really chill. <laughs> this does feel like it is a point on the map that we could have built bu- build to. Yes. Yes. But we didn't. Yeah. We went yeah. from A to X or yes. somewhere. We didn't we never hit B, C, and D. Right. Mm-hmm. How do you feel this reflects on Mal's position as, you know, team dad? Oh, you guys end yeah. I am too sure. a huge fan of Mal as, as the father figure of this yeah. found family. Right. But this implies something slightly different, specifically with his relationship right. with sure. Zoe. Because mm-hmm. this decontextual or, or recontextualizes Zoe's relationship with Mal out of that found family dynamic into something more right. personal, right. more unique, more mm-hmm. directly connected. Does yeah. that feel I guess in this episode and in general, true mm-hmm. and authentic, or is Wash misreading this situation? I mean, I think if there's anyone that Mal, I, I think that Zoe has the most of Mal's respect of anybody on the boat. So I don't think that, or, or rather, I think that he probably has the least of his paternal instincts towards Zoe mm-hmm. than anybody mm-hmm. else because he recognizes her competence so much because they've yeah. been through so much together. Yeah. He doesn't worry about. He doesn't worry about Zoe. He doesn't yeah. worry yeah. that she'll it, know what to do. It's almost like in the family, she's the sister of Mal. That's what she's I was the just going to say. The family. Yeah. And, and and that will look maybe, uh, you know, the idea of having a work spouse, that right. there's somebody that you work with who mm-hmm. is just, you know, that they've got right. their end of the deal taken care mm-hmm. of and you've got your own and you just have a good, uh, yeah. or I was going to say synergy, but I think that's not often used but anyway um but yeah you just work well together Mm -hmm. and the two of you put out a better product because of it so i see that and and again where in the past that could have called some things into question with wash and zoe but it never did right (laughs) well i mean i feel like if you're gonna if if mal views zoe like with the least amount of like his paternal instinct or his paternal inclinations i feel like almost that makes her like that she's she's the mom of Serenity, quote unquote. Like she's right. like if Mal is dead, Zoe clearly is mom. Yeah. Like Zoe's gonna be the next one in charge. Zoe's always the number two person. But like Zoe more than Inara. I was gonna Inara say Inara mom. has the maternal instinct. Sure, but she's not mom. But I see what you're saying. But but this is why I mean it's all it's Zoe like Coulson and Melinda and com- May over on go. Agents of Shield, right? right. Where it's it's like, a second in command for yes. sure. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if we could if we could call her a ma. I see what you're saying. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's not anyway. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't have that same like like Mal is dad. Right. No, I mean, we Mal will, is I mean, dad. like I would I mean, I don't want to completely discount whatever maternal instincts that Zoe has either because we've also seen her go running over to oh, Kaylee's sure. aid whenever that Kaylee's is true. Hurt, yeah. Very similarly to what yeah. Inara did. And yeah. everybody's going to be fire for, Yeah, everyone's going to be parental storm. towards uh-huh. Kaylee. That's just the thing that we do is every person <laughs> Yeah. Is and it's hard to read anything in the Zoe because Zoe especially is so stoic. Is read Di- well, r- is written differently. Episode she is. Episode. Every episode, yeah. yeah. She no is the telling. one character we have the most problems with mm-hmm. trying to keep up with who she is. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Especially her interiority. Yeah. We just don't see it. Work spouse is, I think, a good place. Yeah. To I think work spouse yeah. is good. And I, I know that in real life, people, you know, tend to not like that. They don't, I mean, maybe your real life spouse doesn't like that you have a quote unquote work spouse right. and then problems can arise, I yeah. guess. I don't know. Uh, well, well, I do see there is some struggle to be had of course, again, we don't see it much in the writing here, but this is a woman who worked under Mal uh, in, the, in the military. For years. Is now under him as At a captain on years. a ship, but married to this other man. And so I could see this, this struggle back and forth of who she listens to, who she cares most about, what she's willing to accept from who and mm-hmm. that type of thing. So I could see that struggle being there. But again, we don't see it as much built in. We have to assume a lot of it. Right. So from there, we cut to Simon finding his sister who just threw up, comforting oh, her. Yeah. 
she talks about how when things are normal, she hates that she knows it will go away again. Yeah. And I love that line where he says, you are my beautiful sister. And she says, mm-hmm. I threw up on your bed. And he goes, yep. Definitely my sister. (laughs) Yeah, because she's having a little bit of an identity crisis there, right? And it's good that I do love the Simon and River relationship. It Mm -hmm. just keeps on growing for me. This is one of the reasons that I wish we'd come in on the scene of Kaylee and River running around. That we Uh started the episode with River being normal. Yeah. Yeah, Then we have this point of transition. Then we could move into a version of the Simon scene with Book. Mm. Where we're talking oh, okay, about what sure. the Olympics did to her. Yeah, we which right. makes more sense. Yeah. Present her as positive so that we go through effectively the same experience that River goes through. Oh, Everything I like that normal. better. Right. Yes. And then it's suddenly not. Yeah. Oh, instead of starting with her broken. Yes, yeah. you're right. I like that better. But it's yeah. a great scene and, and the chemistry between these two yes. is just getting better and better and better as it's the show true. goes on. Mm. So we cut over to see Book, Jane, and Kaylee. <laughs> Book reminds Jane and Kaylee of Anara's wishes for privacy as they peek and wait to see Anara's <laughs> client. And everyone keeps referring to the client as he. Right. And a yeah. man does walk on first to the ship. And Mal tries to greet him, but he walks I right love past. That the guy walks right past <laughs> yes. Mal and Mal yep. just like looks stupidly at his own hand. Uh-huh. <laughs> it turns out he is security for the counselor, who is a woman to everyone's surprise. Yep. <laughs> Here's the thing. Inara has an autonomous shuttle. If this client yeah. wanted privacy, Inara could go, let me double check, oh yeah, literally anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> literally anywhere and preserve that yeah. privacy. I like very much what we get of Inara and her uh-huh. client. I mm-hmm. like those scenes themselves, mm-hmm. everything that surrounds it, and God knows, I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> An iconic line. It is. It's a good joke. It's a great gift. It's, it's, a it's good, an excellent it's a good joke. It's a well-constructed joke. I hate what we have to do to get there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It is a bit of uh, tweaking the writing slightly for a joke. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I think so. I'm okay with it. Oh, yep. <laughs> well, and it does make me feel for Inara because she does not... I'm, she doesn't win, you know. She mm. she right. has to capitulate. I don't know. Now. I feel like she wins. I don't know. She was a good looking counselor. <laughs> <laughs> I love the beat that we get from Kaylee when Kaylee says, "I knew she took females as clients. I just they look so glamorous together." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Kaylee. of glamorous. Yes. glamorous. She's so and sweet. Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She she's look. I mean, of course, Jane and her are seeing two different things. Yeah, yep. <laughs> of course. Kay- Kaylee is looking up to them and going, "I want to be." Than that glamorous. Position. I want to be yeah, glamorous yeah. and beautiful Composed. and wanted like oh, this. Yeah. And James obviously looking for completely different reasons. He <laughs> says, I'll be in my bunk. And yeah. then he walks off. <laughs> kind of, ah, there's something unpleasantly objectifying them mm-hmm. yeah. in oh, an unpleasant way, which would yeah. be kind of unpleasant anyway, but he knows Inara. Yeah. Like she is actually a person to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't that... feel like almost anybody's a person to Jane. Though. <laughs> so there's fair. just no, Jane, Jane and, and, and everybody else. else. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I also love like Adam Baldwin does such a great job with the expression there. He literally looks like he's about to pass out because the blood has drained so quickly from his brain. It's amazing. Oh no. <laughs> so we cut to Mal and Zoe who are preparing to depart and sell their goods. But Wash has made the shuttle so that it needs him to leave. I am so irritated by all of this. It seems very petulant, it's and I don't like so it. It's yeah. so petty. And I don't what see... What are you doing, Wash? Why? Well, and why? I'm, I wonder why Mal doesn't put his foot down. He absolutely can't. He is the captain. He just well, kind of well, decides to Well, he tries to, to but then Zoe's it. like, you know what? Yeah, F it, Zoe and says off. she's okay with it, which right, I think helps. Sure. And then Mal says, if this wasn't such an easy run, I wouldn't yeah, have said yes, and next run. time this won't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. I, I personally feel like that's kind of a slippery slope. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know that I would have given any as as the captain. I would have I would have said I probably know, wouldn't either. This is how this is going yeah. to work. This gonna go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> we, well, we've shit. seen Mal runs a tight ship. Mal We've usually seen the way does. he, he yeah. controls things well, and, and he's very stern with people. To and him trusting Zoe and if Zoe right. is like, okay, all right, you know, what? fine. If I don't know if that's there's a this good understanding point. between yeah. Zoe and Mal that it's like we're going to show Wash that this isn't. I mean, even though this is a milk run, like he isn't cut out for this thing. Oh, I like that. Let's let him go ahead and do this get it out of a system uh-huh. yes, and then that's what I was we'll be back to doing the, the real work afterwards. I like that. Uh, Which okay. isn't super great. I mean, you don't it's want not to super great. Me, but whenever somebody's acting like a big freaking baby. <laughs> and you just want to get your job done. And you, you just want to get true. the job done. You're supposed to be meeting there. You just, it's like, we just how long can you spend fighting it before you're just like, we have to go. I got, yeah. I'm supposed to be delivering this sure. We got a rendezvous point. Wash says that his reason behind it is he's, it's a dangerous mission and that he's, uh, can't stand the thought of something happening. This, 
might cause the two of them to come back with another bonding story over this adventure. I cannot <laughs> handle this. Yeah, the I, I can't stand the thought of something happening that might cause you two to come back with another thrilling tale of bonding and adventure. What? This has never been a problem for him this entire series. Like, no. not, well, I mean, even... I just, oh, it's driving me crazy. Even in Serenity, even in the first episode when we see everybody was around the dinner table and they're all sharing stories, Wash mm-hmm. doesn't have a problem with that. No. Like, is he just, mm-hmm. it's it's fine whenever we're, like, introducing stories to new people who have now come on board, but, like, no, we can't talk to Kaylee about our time in the trenches? Like, mm-hmm. what is going on here? Well, and I wonder how he would feel if the role were reversed and someone was trying to prove that they were a better pilot, say, or yeah. that, that they could do his job just as good as, as he can. Well, I don't think it's the same as that necessarily, because I don't think he's trying to show that he can do Zoe's job. He just wants to... Like, what does he want? Here's my question. Well, what does Wash want? Well, it's that thing where he feels like Zoe and Mal have this relationship that he's jealous of, and he wants to be involved, and he wants to be have that relationship with his wife. So he's like, why don't you stay home? We'll go have this fun, and I'll see what you do. So why didn't he have Mal stay back and he and Zoe go together? That's That's the a good question. Right. Yeah. yeah. And yes. the answer is because the concept for this episode is what if Zoe had to choose? Uh, yes. Why uh, is a Zoe-centric episode? This oh, this is, is so frustrating. Question. This could have been really... We could have had a really great episode where like we've got like we finally learn Zoe where we finally yeah. learn who yeah. Zoe is instead we get completely uncharacteristic wash yeah and uh, uh, anyway and lots and, of bickering and here mm-hmm. we do see Mal's reasoning for why he accepts he says this is a fine and then the translation here is not of self indulgent indulgent lunacy but I don't have time to unwind it <laughs> and Zoe agrees to stay and Mal frustrated reluctantly agrees to go with wash instead mm-hmm. And as Zoe is leaving, Wash hollers, we promise not to stop off for beers with the fellas. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you saying to your wife right now? Why are you saying these things? Why are you being mean? He is being mean. He's being mean. Yeah. And then and I think that leaves, Zoe's being as gracious as she can be in the circumstance. Uh, yeah, well, I, I mean, she's keeping her mouth shut because otherwise yeah. she's going to kick his ass. And yeah. I will say that jealousy leads to meanness very often. That's yeah, that's that's the that what comes true. out of it. And there's a lot of jealousness going. And he's he's having a break. He definitely is having yeah. having some kind of break yeah. here emotionally. I don't mm-hmm. like to see it because I love Wash so much, yeah. and he's usually like he and Kaylee can be interchanged for like our heart of the team. Exactly. Yeah. And I don't like seeing our heart of the team right. be such a dick. Right. <laughs> We get pretty good Zoe in the scene. We get sure. really good Mal. I like seeing yeah. befuddled, frustrated Mal. Yeah. That's okay. Good, Another I'm great gif. I'm angry. Yeah. And I'm armed. Yeah. <laughs> Another great line. Another great gif. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now we get a cut to Anara with her client. And Anara is massaging her client as they discuss their yes, client relationship. <laughs> <laughs> And we get a bit of an interesting dialogue here. It's a pretty short scene, but mm-hmm. the the client says, there's no need for the show, Inara. I just need to relax with someone who's making no demands on me. Mm-hmm. And Inara says, most of my clientele is male. If I choose a woman, she tends to be extraordinary in some way. And the fact is, I occasionally have that exact same need that you do. Right. One cannot always be oneself in the company of men. Yes. Another good <laughs> gift I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, inter- I, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, yeah, I like this very much uh, about Inara because we've seen this from her, mm-hmm. that she is always on. She's always know, on. That her job yes. means she is always on. And even in those moments, she can't truly relax with Mal. Mm-hmm. The closest we see her is with Kaylee. Yeah. But even Kaylee really looks up to her. Mm-hmm. And even though she loves Kaylee very much, she feels that maternal instinct yeah. towards her and that is a part of being on mm-hmm. so i like this i think it's very sincere it also happens to put her client at ease mm-hmm. and so there may even be a part of that that I mean, she, she may have said on. it yeah. yeah she may have I've, said it even if she didn't believe it but i think that she did i've wondered that exact point is mm-hmm. this is this an hour just doing her job mm-hmm. right well, she's and very good at her job because there's less I choose to believe that she isn't. At right. least I choose mm-hmm. to believe that this is just completely sincere mm-hmm. and that this is a moment of genuine and yeah. authentic connection for her because otherwise it's Inara doing the wonderful and generous work that right. she does. But we've seen that before. Exactly. Yeah. It wouldn't this be here. This is new. Mm-hmm. And if you interpret it as sincere, I think it works. It works mm-hmm. beautifully. It works really yeah. well. Yeah. And I think that we yeah. are meant to, especially because we have seen her like do her job very, very well. Yes. Right. We don't need more reminders of how good Inara is at her job. Right. Like she's one of the best. She's the greatest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we end this scene with the two of them kissing. And I have an interesting note about this because okay. apparently this was a note from Fox that said, nope, can't do that. <laughs> 
And the writer of this episode has this quote where she's talking about this moment saying, huh, we amp up the violence in this episode to 10. (laughs) Way more than we ever have. We kill people in numerous, numerous ways, Mm, left and right in this episode. But two women kissing on screen is not okay. We didn't get notes on those other things. Oh, (laughs) yeah. And apparently Joss Whedon got this note, talked to the crew and said, forget about it. Forget this note was ever sent. <gasps> Do you this think that this in. scene is why the show got canceled? No. <laughs> no. I don't think so. But uh, because Fox does, mad, have the, <laughs> Fox does have the last say, they could have done something and be like, no, sure, sure, back, yeah. you got to change this. But I, apparently they sent the note and said, we can't have this. And they sent the episode with it still in and Fox just said, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we go back to Wash and Mal on the shuttle heading toward the place to make the deal. And I do like this scene, this line from Wash where he says, hey, I've been in a firefight before. No, you haven't. And then Mal looks at him and goes, well, I was in a fire. Nope. Actually, I was fired from a fire cook opportunity. I can handle myself. And he even (laughs) says opportunity, which makes me think that he didn't (laughs) actually (laughs) even have like a first day. How do you get fired (laughs) from an opportunity? (laughs) Wash doesn't Cook? <laughs> oh. I don't but understand that is a great wash, wash in this episode. There, where it's like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's wash. Yeah, this, goofy this is wash. why people generally remember war stories as being maybe better than it is. Yeah. Because the good lines are so are really good. good. Yeah. 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 The well, good it's an bits enjoyable are great. Yeah. episode. Yeah. Well, I feel like the last third of this episode is a- absolutely my favorite part. Whenever yeah. we bust in and we're, we're saving yeah. everybody. Yeah. We're pretty but much like, done with the setup. Yeah, yeah. like the setup. that's problematic. The setup. The setup I don't like. I don't believe it. I feel like it's unearned. But once we get into it, no, we're going to go bust down. Niska's place and like mm, save the captain yeah. like I'm all in at right. that point yeah, everybody's yeah. kicking ass and it's totally awesome yes but up to this point I'm watching this and I'm just like you're making me dislike Wash and he is one of my absolute favorite characters in yeah. all of fiction yeah. what are you doing yeah. I do think it gets better from here and Mal says you understand what Zoe's job entails and Wash says I'll learn as I go and uh. it cuts to him carrying the giant box which apparently so now was, I'm learning about carrying which shut up apparently was weighed down a lot so that oh, he, really? like he was coming to carry something heavy <laughs> that's good he said so now I'm learning about carrying I always notice in TV shows whenever they're like oh this is really heavy I'm like no it's not that or, or like many times when <laughs> someone's Starbucks holding a cup, drink it's, and it's nothing completely empty yeah. cups that yes, happened empty on the flash the just the other day and I was like guys this is a well done production just put water don't ruin in it. it with that come on in it. What are you doing? <laughs> it doesn't need to be coffee. <laughs> anyway. Uh, My biggest pet peeve. Fun note about this, where they're doing the meat to sell the medicine is the same desert where Buffy the Vampire Slayer met the first Slayer. It's the same filming yeah. location. Oh. Wow. Nice. So you might recognize it. There's like the one desert outside of the yeah. WB Studios, Fox yeah. Studios. It's, I assume it's, it's your the studio. It's the Whedon Desert. I'm it's the Whedon it Desert. Yes. <laughs> the Whedon Desert. The Whedon Desert. Like the Whedon it. Savannah. See, that's what I call the years between Dollhouse and the Avengers. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the episode title. <laughs> that's pretty good. Unfortunately, the deal does not go as planned. They are ambushed, nope. yep. and Mal pushes Wash to the ground as gunshots fly. And the armed men approach, and Wash says, Now I'm learning about scary. <laughs> You already know about Scary Wash. Reavers took over your ship in the it's second true. episode. And no, he was first episode. fiercely competent. Yeah. But he wasn't on the job then. So he's learning on the job here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's for the jokes. They're writing for it's the jokes for here. for the yeah. jokes. But it's not like they're not doing it for it. the lulls and I'm getting nothing. <laughs> I'm getting that little shrug emoji. Let's That's see all if, I'm getting. Let's see if Act 2 can help That's you in the episode <laughs> The episode title and not the shrug emoji, but actually, like the actual, actual, actual shrug, shrug emoji. emoji. <laughs> can I do that? I, sure. think, I think you can. All right, I'm find a way do to it. do that. <laughs> so, act two Anara and her client say goodbye with a kiss. Jane, who is supposed to be spotting book weightlifting, is distracted and staring. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love this scene. Book is getting hella buff, though. Yeah, it really say. is. Yeah, yeah ship life yeah. is working for him, I think. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, then you get to see that Jane's actually way stronger. He just lifts the bar with one arm and puts it up as oh, he walks yeah, away. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> no problem with this. I'll so be in my bunk. Jane, grab your weapon. Yep. Well, he was gonna until you interrupted him, Zoe. <laughs> get it? It's a wiener joke. Yeah. <laughs> yep, <Forget> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, Zoe comes out and says, Jane, grab, grab your weapon. Joke, laugh. But there's actually a serious reason to grab the weapon. Mm-hmm. And it's that Mal and Wash are late. And she knows something's probably up. Right, over an hour late. Over yeah. an hour ago. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And Book volunteers to join the two of them. Which, which I, I like. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. See, when you volunteer mm-hmm. nicely, you're allowed to go. And Good nobody's call. pissed off at you. 
Good call, And in fact, they would Sarah. like for you to be there. Right. When you're a whiny wanker, no one wants you to go <laughs> and then you get kidnapped by Niska. Again, it is hard when you're jealous and upset. I'm, the writing for it is clearly. not there, yes. but he is supposed to be jealous I, and upset. You're not going to clearly just, think and make good decisions. I can't, <laughs> listen, Wash is a fictional person and someone wrote these lines for him and I cannot forgive that. He could have done better. You're going to be a great parent, Sarah. Thanks. <laughs> Tell your kids to behave themselves or they're going to get kidnapped by Niska. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, well I, hmm. <laughs> Go to the murder closet. The murder closet, I remember. <laughs> So now we cut to them finding the bodies of the men that the deal was supposed to be made with. Mm -hmm. yeah. The book knows the exact gun that killed these men right. and that they must have been sharpshooters. A little bit more into books past there. He has this yeah. knowledge. And he this should, I have. like. We could have had this alone without the Sean Yu and we still would have gotten that little oh, bit yeah, of the Oh yeah, this is way better than Sean Yu. Way better. Yeah, yeah. I even Did love Jane it. being like, how do you know so much about the, what are you shooting yep. rabbits? You exactly. Know, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Right. It's I great. like that very it's much. Like it's a great. Way uh, it feels much more naturalistic than what we're and doing. And much more concise. Yes. The confidence of that, too, to yeah. have yes. Jane just lampshade this inconsistency yes. with Book mm -hmm. and not have Book feel the need to defend himself nope. or offer right. any kind of right. weak explanation. We don't write to the joke. Yeah. In that moment, which is fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The way that this episode picks up its pace, picks up its game as it moves mm -hmm. into the second act mm -hmm. is extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they notice that the medicine from the deal is still there. But Wash and Mal aren't. Mm -hmm. So that tips them off to a bit of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And in this scene, when they turn around and you see a bit into the distance, I'd never noticed this before, but you can see a road and there's cars driving on it in the background. No! <laughs> no! They're real tiny in the background, but you can totally no. see it if you're oh, looking for no! it behind them. It <laughs> happens. Two, we were still yep. doing standard definition. We weren't thinking about HDTV. No one's going to see this. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> But they find the marks of the ship that took them, and Zoe deduces who has them based mm -hmm. off of this. Right. And we cut to Niska's space station, where Mal and Wash are blindfolded, hands tied behind their back. And Wash demands he not be spared of what Mal might know, because he wouldn't spare Zoe. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't like any of this. Any of it? I, Once in flight school, I was laconic. You don't like any of it. I like, okay, here's the thing. I terse. like I once in flight school, I was laconic on its own. But at this point, I'm so irritated yeah. with Wash. It's true, I'm irritated with him this in this whole, Yeah, and it's just like, he it's a won't great line. stop talking. It is a great line. It's a fantastic line. Yeah. It's wonderfully, beautifully done. And of course, Alan Tudyk knocking it out of the park. But at this right. point, I'm just like, if I were Mal, I would elbow Wash and right. just be like, no. sit down and shut up yeah. for five seconds. I like this a lot because he's inexperienced in these situations. Right. Mm -hmm. And what do you do when you're panicking and you're washed? You talk. And yeah. he can't stop talking because he's panicking. That's fair, I guess. And uh. So he's trying to figure out what's going on, trying to plan everything. And I like that. Like, so I'm Zoe. What do I do now? Oh, right. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that joke and there I mean, about it. Like, like, poor about Mal it. having to not only figure out where they're at and come up with a plan and deal with this, but he also has to babysit Wash this yeah. entire so yep. Which thinking, is really yeah. terrible. Mm -hmm. This is uh, why we don't bring people other than Zoe because Zoe and Mal don't need to have conversations. They don't need to even to have the conversation. Right. Yes. Right. Works passes. Yep. And <laughs> Wash is being hopeful. You and Zoe have been in situations like this before, right? This is going to work out okay. And like you said, Wash is panicking. Mal's planning. And Wash suddenly becomes angry that Mal might have put his wife in this situation. She's my wife! What? <laughs> like... Again, you know your wife was in the war. You know yeah. her job. You know what she does you every know day. You, you guys know are the job. Criminals, right? Someone yes. on the crew almost dies every, every week. episode. Yeah. Every, every week. week. Yeah. It's weird. And he says, I'm the one that she swore to love, honor, and obey. Listen. And then Mal goes, yeah. she swore to obey, <laughs> which right? I like. I like that little yes, joke there. Like, like Mal's that. like, she would not do that. And no, then absolutely. Was like, well, no. No, not. she But didn't. that's my point. You, she obeys. She obeys you. And she says, there's obeying going on right under my nose. And Mal says, she doesn't always obey me. She married you. And I love that because it does flip that uh, yeah. idea that we yeah. got in the origin story of Wash where it was Zoe that didn't like Wash and Mal was like that's in love true. with him. This is my question. Is Mal telling the truth? Did he order Zoe not? To marry Wash because up until this episode, Zoe mm -hmm. has actually followed every single one of his orders it's without true. any kind of trouble whatsoever. I think right? so. 
I don't think that it is, as he's presenting it here, really against Wash. Mm -hmm. I think as we'll find out later, he's against the shipboard shipboard romances. And I think that's why he said no to Zoe and said, I order you not to do this. He does like Wash. We know that, okay, he says that he's against shipboard romances, but back in Jamestown, Kaylee is patting him on the arm going, no, it's going so well, talking about her and Simon. That's true. And Mal was okay with that. And Mal said that he ordered Zoe not to marry yeah. Wash. Yeah. That's, That's true, true. which is different. They already, not have a clearly they had a relationship yeah. for some time. I just, I, I think the reason I accepted it is true is because I like the idea of Mal being like, no, and Zoe being like, whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm going to disobey your orders in this area. And so I mm. like that idea there because it does give that light to her marriage is more important than her relationship with, with Mal. Yeah. And I think it, I like that beat. Well, but, uh, you're right. It doesn't play necessarily with the past of what's going right. on. Yeah. I don't like said, know if, Zoe's the least consistent of all. Right. Yeah, I don't know if her marriage is more important to her than yeah. Mal is. I mean, I know that she walks in and immediately saves Wash, but that's because Mal can, Mal take, can take care of himself. Of himself. Yep. Yeah. Wash can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Ah, oh, gosh. <laughs> yep, I know. I, I, I want to think why, well of Zoe, yeah. but like we... Well, I think we can think well of Zoe either way. Okay. Right. Either Mal's lying to Wash now mm-hmm. for some arc. To shut reason. him up. Maybe he's anticipating what's coming next and he already probably, wants to start so he prob- under his Yeah, because at this point, Mal That's has already like, felt point. around the room and he's sure. probably figured out where they're at. And sure. he's like, okay, I got to start, you know, pissing him off now. Yeah. yeah. So it's possible that Mal's telling the truth and mm-hmm. that Zoe disobeyed Mal's order in order to marry Wash, which I think we could probably agree is an admirable act that Mal doesn't actually have the right, right. to forbid of course, Zoe from of course, marrying sure. the man that she wants to marry. Mm-hmm. Or no such order was ever given, in which mm-hmm. case we can still think well of Zoe because she came around on Wash even after seeing mm. the terrible, terrible mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst. It's pretty bad. So in our scene, Niska walks in and takes off Mal's blindfold and Mal says, mother humping son of a... In Chinese. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and and Wash what? Is gonna... what? <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I love that. And we cut to Zoe, who is making a plan. I love Zoe here. Making oh this my plan. gosh, yeah. So good. She's taking Again, control. the last third of this episode, brilliant. Yeah. Everybody is yeah. on point. Everybody's awesome. Everybody's really awesome. Writing is really super great. I finally start liking Wash again here in a few minutes. Here in a yeah. few minutes. We're almost yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on tight, gang. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, she's collecting all the money she can from the crew to take Deniska right. unarmed and offer a deal to get Wash and Mal back because she thinks that he'll respect that mm-hmm. as a criminal who has his own set of rules like Mal. Sure. Mm-hmm. Jane even gives into the pool, which I like. Oh, a yeah. little bit more mm-hmm. that I feel bad and Mal mm-hmm. did let me back in and mm-hmm. gave me a second chance, so sure, I'm going to help sure. him out here too. And I'm sure that we did this because we need for our scrappy heroes to be like, you know out of money constantly all the time so that we can keep them like needing to oh, try to do all this stuff. Job. But... There was still that entire bag of medicine and presumably also bag of money back on the planet. Like, yep. we could, I mean, like, we're and probably we still fine. And knowing how this episode ends, they probably got all their money back that they then gave Deniska. Probably so. <laughs> I would imagine. Why wouldn't you? Sure. Steal his Tiffany lamp. Zoe says... Nice to- lamp. <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, even <laughs> criminals have rules. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that steal was... Steal the lamp. man's lamp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a real Tiffany lamp. Alan Tudyk was talking to Nathan Fillion about how that lamp was on set, and he goes, oh, it was real Tiffany. Did you get a chance to look at it? He's like, no, all they said was stay away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Do not touch <laughs> Don't touch that. <laughs> Don't touch this lamp. (laughs) Zoe tells the rest of the crew to wait a reasonable amount of time and then get out of there in case things go south. We cut to Niska torturing Wash and Mal, but in between shocks, they only argue with each other about Zoe. Oh, man. It's hard to watch, right? This is hard to watch. This is where we lost Lily. So, no surprise. Yep, Mm -hmm. she was done now. Can we, can you remind me of the lines here? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if I read Mal, you can read Wash. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all about community go. theater. We have the thing you've been asking for. Woo. I'm not going to say it again. Shipboard romances complicate things. For who? For you? For everyone. Well, what about love? Uh, zap. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, my part. I ain't against it as a rule, but in situations such as ours, it tends to cause problems. It splits loyalties. You know what I think? Uh-huh. What? Ah! What? Wash, what do you think? Because I'm interested. This policy you got against shipboard relationships, that's just you protect, projecting your own intimacy issues on everyone else. Ah! Of course, could be, a lot, could be a lot simpler than that. Could be I just don't think you're good enough for Zoe. I don't give a good girl what you think. Oh, don't you? Zoe and I, we got a history, and I figure you got to be asking yourself some fundamental questions as to the nature of that history. You never slept with my wife. Oh, that a fact? You know that for sure, do you? You ever ask her? 
We've been ah! together. <laughs> <laughs> That's my line. Hey, we've oh. been together a long time before you came along, Walsh, and she's a damn fine looking woman. <laughs> it never happened. You know how I know? How? Tell me. This old captain thing isn't Zoe trouble. It's the guy she never slept with thing. Hell, Mal, I wish you had slept with her. Then at least she'd be over it. Oh, you want me to sleep with her? Would that make you feel better? It might. Oh, I'd imagine it'd do wonders for her, too. <laughs> Screw you. Get in line. <laughs> zap, 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 zap. Zap, zap, zap. <laughs> okay, Wash, I'm going to do it. Wash, Wash, listen. First thing we do when we get back, listen to me. First thing when we get back, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your wife into my bed. Yeah? I'm going to get me a piece of... And we cut back yeah. to the... Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> so here's what's I, I can make this worse for you, by the way, too. What? Uh, that uh, wouldn't take much, because that's Michael the best thing Fairman, that ever happened, pretty much. <laughs> who plays Niska, <laughs> says that he wanted to find a way to play this character in such a way that he would want this torture to last. And it's oh. not just sending a message, and it's not just getting his revenge, but he's going to be here with, with Mel, torturing him for hours and hours, days, mm. perhaps. At least And he two needs days to be enjoying minimum. it. He needs a reason to enjoy it. So... Michael Fairman played it in such a way that it was sexually arousing him to watch Mal being tortured. Oh, <laughs> ew, no. <laughs> he said I don't that like was, that. So he said that was the, the, what he went into that this role with, with while watching mm. Mal. Mm. And that was the only way he could justify sitting there staring at Mal, enjoying it for two days straight. Yeah. <laughs> Niska, well, you've got problems. Niska has problems. This, this whole scene's a lot grosser and worse than just closet. the torture. I hope I never remember that. Better from a man with a Tiffany lamp. You better <laughs> from a man with a Tiffany lamp. <laughs> okay, so this conversation would lead us to believe that Wash does in fact think that Zoe has some kind of lingering romantic feelings for Mal that she has never gotten out of her system because they didn't sleep together? Yeah. I love I mean, that interpretation. I love this worse. analysis. I love how deep we get into our characters' POVs here. I love how how intimate and how powerful the entire thing is. I think that this is resonant with sincerity, and I love this idea that Zoe is hooked on Mal, not necessarily because she hasn't slept with him, but because there has been something unresolved between them. I'm not sure oh, that it's true. something. Okay. But I uh -huh. believe that Wash believes Yes. But Wash, Wash believes it. And that's, okay. what, that's what's that powering and firing his jealousy. Okay. okay. I would argue, in fact, that it isn't true. I would argue, in fact, that that's right. not a part right. of, it's, of it's, Zoe's It's his perception of yeah. the, the issues. Interesting. Okay. I like that. That's better than, than the idea that this has been a fight that's been going round and round with him and Zoe. Because I don't like that if she told him that that wasn't the case mm -hmm. and he can't get past it. But if it's just something that he has lingering in the back yeah, of his mind. Yeah, I don't mind, know if Wash would be out brave enough this. to ask that. I do really, really like Nathan Fillion in this scene. He and does it's because such oh, a man. Good it job. has to be such a hard job as an actor to be saying one thing with an emotion one way and mm -hmm. acting a different way to show what you're really trying to do. Because here he is yelling, obviously, these really mean things right. at Wash. Yeah being very mean to Wash, mm -hmm. who's being tortured along with him. Mm -hmm. But he's acting and playing it very well to show that he's doing it for Wash's good, to keep yeah. him going, to give him, to get him distracted from the pain, yeah. to keep him alive. When and he, he screams, cares. listen to me. And that passion. Mm -hmm. When he screams, listen to me, I almost want to cry yeah. Yeah. at that moment, it just is seeing great. his love for Wash. Mm -hmm. And Alan Tudyk, too, that moment when he starts to break. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. so hard to watch. Yeah. yeah. They're oh. both so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's at this moment that badass Zoe arrives. Oh, she's so the baddest uh, ass that ever badass in the history of badass. There's no fear in her face. She is totally down for whatever is about to happen, mm -hmm. knowing yeah, that it could go completely sure. south. Mm -hmm. And when she walks in and uh, Wash sees her and starts uh, saying, no, no, run, oh, run, that's when I finally am like, okay, yes. I'm back on board. Now I'm, I'm back, back on board. board. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. Wash does want his wife to be safe. Yes. And so we, whatever mm -hmm. we can read into those past things and whatever is not there, we do know that he loves his wife and yes. when you love someone you want her to be safe right mm -hmm. him or her to be safe mm -hmm. and so i love that you get that when he says no run run and with he's barely able to speak but yes. he's like get mm -hmm. out go mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and then niska thinks that he's got the upper hand and he's like this isn't yes. enough for both it could be enough for one maybe now you have to him yeah <laughs> well, i'm sorry you were gonna ask me to choose right uh -huh. you want to finish like yeah. damn He's so cool. see it in Niska's face. He's so excited to yeah. offer this. He's like, ah, I got you now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then to pay her back for that indiscretion, he cuts off Mal's ear. Yep, yep. That's pretty insane. We get our act break. We come yep. back and Wash is let loose, but Niska decides that the money is too much and has Mal's ear cut off and given to her as well. Mm. And she just very calmly tucks yep. it into her vest <laughs> like it ain't oh. no thing. You think this is the first time that's happened to Zoe? <laughs> I don't know how many 
eight years <laughs> she's, she's had to away to that vest. I mean, she's seen some pretty horrible yeah. things. I guess so. I can so. see why she could keep that straight face and be able to do mm-hmm. something Well, like yeah, that. I mean, you can't let Niska know that he's unnerved you. It's, yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I respect yeah. that about yeah. her mm-hmm. very much. And Zoe helps Wash walk out as Mal screams in the background. Oh, in gosh. Mm. It's real tough. Uh, back on the shuttle, Wash is blown away by how strong Mal is, how right. he kept him from breaking. Mm-hmm. He just had this revelation yeah. of who Mal yeah. is as a person. So I do, I, I didn't catch this until I'm just saying it now, that the, the Shen Yu thing uh, is true for Wash of Mal in that torture. Oh. He does see something of oh. Mal there, and it has a new respect for Mal in that. So that's that, good, that's a bit of that Oh, there. good job, yeah. But it's not the breaking of Mal, it's the fact that Mal won't break. Right. So even so then, even it's when kind you of a rejection. The, so even, the, even yeah, when you yeah. hold yeah. Mal over it. the volcano, yeah. he's the same man that you've known for the last 40 years. Right. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Huh. interesting. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, Mal's tested but not broken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, the, and that's the distinction. I, well, Mal was broken years ago. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> In this that specific hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Wash here. As you see this man broken, you expect him to just crawl in, need need medicine, need healed up. Mm-hmm. No, he's resolved. He's going back and he's saving Mal. Yeah. Mal gave everything for him in that moment and he's resolved to give everything back to save Mal. And I think here was an important thing for Wash also to understand now why Zoe accepts everything Mal says without question. Why mm-hmm. she why she doesn't come back at him and and argue yeah. points all the time. Why she's so quick to fall in line yeah. because this has happened with her and Mal several times. Right. She's yeah. seen him prove himself and not oh, yeah. break. Mm-hmm. In saying that, I almost wonder if this story would have done better, at least with uh, Wash and Zoe as a prequel to what we've already seen in all of this show to see like that this, this had happened, happened way earlier. Well, no, to see that this was like a flashback. Oh, this had all happened sure. before. Oh. And that brought us to the relationship that they all have now, because then you would understand why sure, oh. they have their fights sometimes yeah. still, but Wash yeah. understands the relationship. Right. Cause yeah. we've seen that he does yeah. understand the relationship, but now in this episode, he right. doesn't and now finds out why the relationship works. Right. I think the only other time that we've seen Mal and Wash really come like almost toe to toe was in out of gas whenever, Zoe was hurt and yeah. washed and oh yes. her side. Yeah. of course uh-huh. um, and they got I mean like really touchy about that which yeah. I completely understood I, but I totally ultimately understood he it did. then yeah. and mm-hmm. ultimately he did do what Mal said right yeah. and so and even then the tension isn't that, that, that they are, themselves are in conflict it's, right. it's the conflict between the captain and the man it's right. the conflict between the pragmatic mm-hmm. approach and the emotionally yeah. connected emotionally yeah. right exactly approach. so they return to the ship Zoe hands Simon Mal's ear to the surprise of the crew <laughs> Book. Sorry, I snorted then. <laughs> don't hear that very often. Yeah. yeah. Book in Chinese says, filthy fornicators of livestock. Yeah. Yeah. I love Jane's line. Yeah. What are we going to do? Clone him? Yeah, we're getting him back. What are we going to do? Clone him? Like, God bless you, Jane. You simple idiot. Uh, Simon does say that the ears should be able to be reattached. So we at least get that that's going to happen because mm-hmm. it would cost way too much to just make Mal earless for the rest of this series. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> And back to Niska, he asks Mal if he is familiar with Shan Yu. And Mal asks if he's starting a book club or trying to torture him, <laughs> which I really love. I do love Mal. <laughs> that Mal Mal's there amazing. is like, why are you talking about this guy? Which is almost what we're saying here as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why are you, though? Why? Why, though? <laughs> and Niska introduces a special torture device to see if he can meet the real Mal. And it drills into Mal's chest. And you see it like go through the oh, veins. It's yeah. so terrible. Yeah. It it's terrible. really it's awful. awful. Like, yes. just, uh, I don't know what it is, but I hate it forever. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's the worst. That's what. Back on the ship, Wash and Zoe arm up, and Jane tells them that the two of them won't be enough to do this. Mm-hmm. Anara apparently had left to try to get help from the counselor with no avail. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love when Kaylee says, what are they doing? And Jane goes, there, or, or uh, uh, one of them turns around and says, we're going to go get the captain. And Jane, Kaylee goes, oh, can they do that? And Jane's like, no. 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 <laughs> and then Wash says, you know, there's a certain motto, a creed among folks like us. Like, he's all of a sudden this yeah. badass yeah, out of like, nowhere. Like, he took off his Hawaiian yeah. shirt. Now he's just like, he's, he's, got, he's, he's got his brown coat on. Uh, what do you call it? The boys who were driving around on the four-wheelers up in Wisconsin, the thing, Carhartts. Carhartts. <laughs> Carhartts. He's, he's in his sleeveless Carhartt. Yeah. He's, yeah. All, he's like, all like, Tom's looking at Jane. Like, gun. He's got the yep. tiniest gun. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he should be carrying a purse to keep that gun in. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, but <laughs> what else are you gonna keep that gun in? It's a so pocket. tiny. It's like a it's a purse gun. It's a it's, it's a, a gun for a small like clutch <laughs> bag. That's what it is. It's not sexist, it's what the gun's for. <laughs> it, do I we, said he could carry it. <laughs> do we wish that Wash had like an actual moment of heroism here, an actual 
turn like giant a leadership gun? turn? Well, not necessarily oh, oh, oh. a giant gun, but that, that he could have, because this, you know, we play this for the joke, and it's a really great I joke, finally I am, it. like, now back on board brilliant. with Wash at this yeah. point, yeah. and I'm like, yes, yeah. okay, thank God, it's my Wash. He's yeah. saying we leave no man behind. He's not joking. He's yeah. fully in. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. just happens to be holding a small gun. <laughs> right, for, right, for right. Effect. I don't know. I think that this might be his big moment of heroism. Like, yeah. he's now, like, he's letting it go. He's he's realized, like, you know, he was wrong to try and, like, cause this dissension and this infighting among the crew, and... Now they're going back to like they they gotta go save their cap. They gotta yeah. go save Mal yeah. and bring him back. They gotta get their family back together. And I do like that it wasn't Zoe's idea. That Zoe wasn't like, okay, now we got you back. Now let's try to. Fight. So he's mm-hmm. like, no, it's Wash. Wash is like, no, we have to go back now. Yes. There's yeah. no time. Yep. They're yeah. going to kill him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And so I like that a lot. Of course, Jane says this is suicide. Yes. Uh, as Wash and Zoe go to leave, they come across Book, Simon, and Kaylee arming themselves, saying they're coming with. Aww. Kaylee says, "If it were any one of us, the captain wouldn't hesitate." That is That's so right. True. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we get that funny line about book mm-hmm. where Zoe says preacher don't the Bible have some pretty specific things to say about killing it's a little fuzzier on kneecaps yep, it's quite specific <laughs> it is however somewhat fuzzier on the subject of kneecaps but then we hear a gun cocking and the camera turns and we see that Jane has come out with Vera yep. Vera, <laughs> Vera. he's taking Vera not, on a date they're That's not leaving right. Jane behind <laughs> <laughs> he's just like what now you know he's and invested then we cut to Niska Torturing That's Mal. right. Let's go get Mal. Or like, let's save the cabin is what they say. And then we mm-hmm. get a great irony cut. Yeah, where the torturer confirms Aniska. He's dead. Yeah. Captain's mm-hmm. dead. Mal's He's dead. dead. Mm. And we get our act break. Yeah. Thinking for the whole commercial break, well, how are they going to save a dead guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just lose our captain. He's just yeah. confirmed dead. What are they going to do? And we come back to Aniska's man getting Mal's heart beating again. Of He's bringing just the worst. Back. Just and a terrible, bad, bad Niska man. Niska says, Mr. Reynolds, you died. Mr. Reynolds. Mm. Seemed like, and then Mal says, seemed like the thing to do. Oh. And Niska says, when you die, I can't hurt you anymore. And I mm. want two days at least, minimum. He's Which is what Zoe had said, that yeah. he was going to make it last yeah. as she long knows. as he as could. As she knows. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Niska is the worst. Yeah, Why did we ever do business with Niska? It's, Niska? it's true. Why did we do business with Niska? Job, it's like, no, we shouldn't yeah. do this. We should thing, not though. have done we this. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be working with him. You are. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> also should have just bought that compression coil. Should have. Don't work with Niska. You want to know Listen We could have kept a spare compression coil on the ship. There's tons of room in Serenity. We can use one three. Not a bad idea. So, on the ship, Wash is trying to sneak them up to the station. And Jane's well, question whether it'll He's work. He's going to crash straight into their airlock yeah. <laughs> and then, like, the make surprise that attack. Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just. I do like Zoe complete faith in her husband here. Oh, yeah. It's like throwing a dart, Jane, mm-hmm. and hitting a bullseye 6,000 miles away. That's my man. Yeah. yeah. She's mm-hmm. like saying, it, this is impossible. He's going to do it. He's mm-hmm. going to do it. And it is a reminder of where he where he does shine, where yes. his strength is. Yeah. Yeah. Which... yeah. It does again, though, push back against Wash's sense of his wife. Mm. Because Zoe, because we're so far from, as you said, Zoe's interiority throughout yes. the series. Mm-hmm. And from Zoe's POV, even in this episode. Even in this. We don't know what she thinks of Wash. We don't actually know how she yeah. feels about Wash and Mal. This is supposed to be her episode. This is supposed to be her conflict. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it isn't for a second. Even when she is called upon to choose, when we get to right. the crux of that moment, it's tactical. Yeah. It's not a personal emotional decision. That right. is true. You don't hold Zoe's feet to the fire mm-hmm. in terms of choosing. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's frustrating because I think there's a story there. I think there's sure. a version of this story where we're in Zoe's POV for the entire thing and we get to God, see that would have been her amazing. That would have been so much herself better herself in mm-hmm. in those terms. It's unfortunate. But mm-hmm. I love genuinely that moment of, of pride. Mm-hmm. Right. And we get to see, too, for the first time this episode, Wash's capability. Yeah. Yes. This is mm-hmm. why Which was very he important is worthy to see. Yeah. Yes. So the crew prepares to board. Zoe gives the plan. If it moves, shoot it. Kaylee is <laughs> Unless wonderful it's the here. Captain. Unless it's the captain. It's the captain. <laughs> Unless it's the captain. <laughs> <laughs> Wash pulls off the surprise attachment and the alarm is only sounded once they are ready to board. And I love that they cut the Mal just for long enough for him to say, listen, if you've got guests, I can come back later. <laughs> oh, Mal. <laughs> Nothing will ever break you because nope. you are already so broken. Oh. And the crew had this great idea. They send the mule out first with this explosive tank on right? front yes. so that when they shoot, it engulfs it in flames. It comes Very flying smart. toward the shoulder shooting. <laughs> mm-hmm. Brilliant. Zoe tells Kaylee, Book, and Simon to hold this ground as Wash, Jane, and her continue forward. And Book shoots a man in the knee, just like he said he would. That's right. (laughs) Don't mess with Book. 
Niska goes to the communicator to check on the situation as mm-hmm. Mal's torturer, Niska's henchman, looks away. Mal attaches the torture device to Whoop. the back of his neck, <laughs> incapacitating him and hits Niska, who falls to the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, this scene is this so... This is why I, you leave Mal I behind can't. and not Wash. Yep, yep. he's oh, got it. Yeah, no, this yeah. is exactly mm-hmm. why you leave behind Mal and not Wash, because yep. Wash yeah. would have died about three more times. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mal instead gets so damn scary. Yes. And it... Ooh, yeah. I don't like seeing him like this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks like I business ain't running it. as much as crawling away. You want to meet the real me now? Oh, I don't like it. it He's I don't blood, like, like it. Pouring down his face. In the commentary, I thought it was funny. While uh, Alan Tudyk and Nathan Fillion are doing the commentary, they're joking the whole time. Almost nothing sure. they say is serious. <laughs> I actually found some forums where people took what they were saying as serious and were very upset by some of the things they said. But the whole thing's obviously just them goofing off and not uh-huh. being serious about anything. Except in this moment, Nathan Fillion, I guess, didn't like the way he read that line. He's like, oh, I wish I could film that again. I didn't like that at all. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And Alan Tulek was like, I like that. It was good. <laughs> he did good. <laughs> he did a good job, buddy. So this is the ultimate realization of this entire plot line that's been running through the episode. Do we believe that this is real Mal? Is this real Mal more than the Mal who fought to protect Wash? More than you the know, Mal who unified the crew of Serenity? More than the Mal who is the father and I mean, the leader and the broken man? Does Mal compartmentalize himself, or is Mal always Mal? Is Mal singing the same song no matter where he goes? Mm. You know, I think, though, that Mal, his ultimate desire, his ultimate want is freedom, right? And that's what Mm -hmm. he's fighting for here. So in that sense, I think we get ultimate Mal. I mean, I think that the violence that he's incurring is almost secondary, Mm -hmm. right? Because Mm -hmm. it's a means of his escape a means to his end it's yeah. he's not he wouldn't stay aboard ship just to torture everyone after he got his right. out no he wouldn't sure. find someone else it's yeah. not the violence itself but no. it's the this is the necessary step in order to secure his freedom right yeah. i think so i like yeah, that i, th- I yeah. think that yeah. the, the real mal you learn here is if you attack him he attacks back well yeah right you're not yeah. able to overcome him so somebody yeah. tries to kill you you kill you him right try back. To kill right. Them right back yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we get the firefight continuing through the hall, and Zoe is a complete badass. She is just <laughs> like, so she's cool. doing so somersaults, cool. whipping out guns, like pow, 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 being amazing. And God, you all know how much I love Kaylee. You oh, know yeah. how close yep. Kaylee is to my heart and how I am Kaylee forever and for all eternity. Forever and for always. Who, who thought it was a good idea to give Kaylee a gun? Yep. Who thought that? I, I, don't I think... know she wants to help. Yeah. Listen, I know sure, she wants to help. Sure. She wants to do her best, just like I would yeah. want to do my best. Yeah. You don't put a gun in my hand. Right. Well, you well, don't do she, that She thing. was the one. She was like, Cap would be there for us. We have to be there for them. That's so true. I, I guess I would be like, the same no, thing. No, you have to give me a gun. You have to give me. You Right. Has a panic attack in this moment, and she doesn't and know what makes, to do. Oh, she it breaks my heart. Up. I can't handle it. Mm. And... So we also see that Simon's a really bad shot. Can't yep. hit anything. Also, oh. is Simon using one of those like Nintendo Entertainment System <laughs> like pistols from Duck Hunt? Sure, that was probably. All I could look at the whole time he had it. I was like, that's a that's an SNES gun. Is what he's oh, man, got right I there. Yeah. It. Like that's. He, <laughs> what? Didn't, he didn't kill anyone, but he did get a really high score. He got the yeah. highest <laughs> score, yeah, definitely. And we see that Book is carrying that whole group with his great shooting. Oh awesome. yeah. yeah. Again, that glimpse into his past where something happened. He's very dead. Preacher. Weirdly yeah. deadly preacher. And it's at this moment that Jane calls to them that they'll they no longer need to hold that ground because they need cover. They gotta yeah. come cover them. Mm-hmm. Simon and Book advance, but Kaylee's still panicking, falls back as men approach with guns, and River comes out. And then River. Yeah. Yeah. Then oh River. man. And here's we get this glimpse of what they've been wanting to do with River, yeah. which we'll only really see more of a fruition uh later, especially in the movie. Yes. Uh, but this is something they were wanting to build here, and this is our first glimpse of it. She closes her eyes, picks up the well, gun. Well, first what she does is she runs over to Kaylee, makes sure Kaylee's okay, right, and yeah, then like, like checks that. out yeah. and then immediately looks around, sees where everybody's at, and then repeats, can't look, can't look, can't look, grabs the gun, bang, 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 everyone is yeah, dead. Everyone With her is eyes dead. closed. Eyes With her eyes closed, out and headshots, headshots, they're all dead. Yep. yep. And then no looks at Kaylee and says, no power in the verse can stop me. Which is... Possibly my favorite two beat in the yeah. entire it's history really of this movie. That might be the best moment in it's the so series. Yeah, that might be the so most good. powerful moment. It so good. No power in the verse can stop me. Powerful moment. Yes. Yeah. Damn, you're right. Gosh. And so then <laughs> <laughs> we get to uh, we see Mal still fighting off um, uh, like starting to lose against this fight with uh, the guy who was torturing him or uh, and, yeah, haven't uh, you killed Jane me enough up. for one day <laughs> yeah 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 Jane runs up and he's got the gun and so he's like no 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 and like puts his arm down and is like Jane this is something the captain has to do for himself no no it's no. not <laughs> no it's not oh, oh. and then just the three of them pop up like it's so good <laughs> 
long couple of days, you guys. <laughs> it's absolutely not. I could use some help. <laughs> this isn't an honor thing. I'm trying to survive. Exactly. Which again, please right. God. Right. Yeah. <laughs> My, Absolutely. Like, Mal does not need to protect his ego here. He just no. needs his and, life saved. And yep. there's that graphic of the torturer violently falling over that railing into all those things. Oh, man, Ooh. like slam, bam, yeah. pow, pow. It's like friggin' Darth Maul and yep. Phantom Menace. Jeez. <laughs> it's a little intense. And I, I kind of like that we just cut straight back to the crew on the ship mm -hmm. after everything's done. Uh, Mal asks us if, if his ear is going to stay on, and Mal tells Nara to thank the counselor for lending them the equipment. <laughs> Simon says, yeah, it's going to be fine. Just don't fiddle with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the counselor apparently lended them a dermal mender for Mal's Good. ear, according mm -hmm. to the commentary. And Nara mentions that Mal did not kill Niska. Uh, they didn't mm. really address what happened there. I did read that... Uh, Michael Fairman that played Niska said that his character spidered himself away, like snuck sure, away of course. At, yeah, like, as he would. And he was really excited about it. He's like, I'm going to come back again, guys, because I yeah. got away. I'm going to yeah. come back. And then the show got canceled and he was uh, really sad. Yeah. <laughs> That's a finale for the first season kind of. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got Mal approaching uh, Simon and saying, how'd you fare with all of that? And he says, I don't know. Never shot anyone before. And Book <laughs> says, I was there, son. I'm sure you haven't shot anyone yet. <laughs> Which I love. Th that's great. Uh, and I like, that seems so different from the, the Simon and Book that we had again yeah. there in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. right. I like this right. with them a lot right. better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really good. So then we see Mal is starting to head up the stairs um, to to his rooms. Where? How does? What is the geography of Serenity? Yep. We'll have to deal with that at yep. some point. <laughs> yeah. uh, Joss Whedon has pointed out before that it, often the actors are going through the wrong doors, places yeah. they wouldn't yeah. be going on it's the like, ship, and there's no reason for them heading. to do yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, I'm not sure. I feel like the stairs only lead to the catwalk, which only lead to the shuttles and the bridge. So he actually should probably be heading through the other room, like through the kitchen into their rooms. Anyway, it's not important. <laughs> not important. Not important. But heading up the stairs, grabs Kaylee's hand. They have that excellent moment together, and then as Kaylee's looking up at him, she sees River up on the other side of the catwalk yeah. and like is very clearly afraid which mm -hmm. breaks my heart because yeah. we had that beautiful perfect scene of them earlier playing together right. and like yeah. being together and how yeah. wonderful that was and now Kaylee can't even look at her mm. right. and there's it's a, just oh it's so hard there. yeah, yeah. And then after this, we get that sweet bit of domesticity where we see Wash yeah. sitting at the table while Zoe is making him some soup. <laughs> Weirdly green soup. Yeah, I like that, I like that line. He says, mm, mm, wife soup. Wife soup. I must have done good. And she says, yes, dear, you done good. Um, and and so it, then, it's kind of like that callback yeah, to yeah. Uh, Mal's wife, that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, <laughs> when, yeah. The, mm -hmm. when it's like, oh, I mean, no, you're, how quaint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, so uh, Zoe has, like, deigned herself to make him some dinner or whatever, and then Mal walks in, and he's like... <laughs> Did you tell her? Your husband has commanded that we sleep together. <laughs> and Wash is like, no, come on. No. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> He'll get the sexual tension out in the open, he seems to think. <laughs> you know, make it a fair fight for your womanly affections. <laughs> Take me, sir. Take me hard. <laughs> James is like, There's something about that that's just unsettling. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then Wash grabs her. We'll be in our bunk. We'll be in our bunk. <laughs> Excellent three beat. They I love it. That Jane oh, this is so good. says, Oh, hey, free soup, hey, and free slaps soup? Mal in the chest where the torture device was. And <laughs> oh, I was like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jane completely misses it. What do you guys make of this resolution for, for Wash and Zoe? Is this emotionally I still satisfying? I don't know. I, I like don't it. believe it. I like the end. Yeah. Yeah, I like the I like the last. I half like of it. it. A lot. I feel like it's a little bit unearned. I don't know. Like I want so badly for it to have been earned that yeah. I think I'm just like, no, I accept this. Yeah. I take this. Yeah. I think that's exactly where I am. Yeah. I like this ending as an ending to a slightly different story, but since there the motivation go. in this story, since the first act was so undercooked, yes, uh -huh. I'll just imagine that it was. I'm just this gonna pretend that this, I'm gonna pretend that you guys <laughs> got this yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. this is great and perfect. This yeah. isn't what you were doing. This is yeah. not. Yeah, because oh. ultimately we should end this episode with. A story. Yeah. We should have a story that, that Mal and oh, Wash can sure. share. Oh, sure. Yeah. That to them. But if we do that, it's still a story about Mal and Wash. It's not a story about, about Zoe. Zoe and Wash. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Zoe's choice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's a lot of people again with the shrugging emoji. I don't. <laughs> So close and yet so far. Yeah, mm. it's like whenever you're doing a math problem and you get the correct answer, but you did it totally wrong. Yes. And you're just like, I mean, I did it. I don't know how. Yeah, can't uh, reduce it. Mm. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, so that's the episode. So let's go ahead and get into our geeking out portion of okay. our podcast here. I love my cat, Dindy. 
what was your favorite part of this episode? Nathan Fillion's acting in the torture scenes. It's yeah. so damn it's good. Really, it's <laughs> yes, good. Absolutely. It's so <laughs> good. Uh, if you're going to call that, then I call dibs on Kaylee and River playing in the yep. beginning of the episode. That's so good. great. Mm, yeah. Then I guess I have to go with Inara and the counselor. Oh, yeah, right. that's also yeah. my favorite. Yeah, okay. And then I get no power in the verse can stop me. Oh, oh nice. Everybody <laughs> wins. Everybody <laughs> wins. Who do you think gave the best performance this episode? Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Followed very, very closely by Alan Tudyk by because Alan of that torture sure. scene. It was so, and, so good. And Zoe was badass. Yeah, Gina no, Zoe she was totally great. Yeah, Gina yeah. Torres yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Torres. Totally mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Um, absolutely Not necessarily excellent. written well in a lot of places, but <laughs> no. acted well. I think we get the best realization of River here, too. I think some yeah. of them yeah. manages yeah. To, yeah. to do two very different things yes. mm-hmm. beautifully and manages to negotiate the fracture point between them. I, I was going to say that in between yeah. sequence that was yeah, so important. That scene with yes. is yeah. so heartbreaking. I haven't, yeah. I haven't contrasted those in my head till just now yeah. where, where she's is the younger sister there like weak and frail and worried and then that strong warrior yeah. later where mm-hmm. she's shooting blindly. Mm-hmm. And we've seen versions of these rivers yeah. before yes. but I don't think it's ever worked this well. I don't think she's ever been as good as she oh, is Oh right yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it has been a long time since I've seen the movie Serenity and mm. I am really looking forward Me to seeing too. it again. It'll yeah. be really Absolutely. interesting to go ahead and go through that and to see that again and to see um, you know what we do end up doing with River um, and just all of that like I think it's going to be awesome because what I do remember is Summer Cloud kicking ass in yep. that yep. movie like left right upside mm-hmm. down like just all over the place so <laughs> A-B-A-B. Yeah. A-B. yeah narratively my appearances on this podcast now have to turn into a three beat so excellent yes alright <laughs> <laughs> there we go in order for us to have you know just the, the full set there I'm um, not above inviting myself back I'll just do that. <laughs> That's totally fine. I'm okay with yeah, it. Yeah, you thought the pilot episode was long. Just imagine when Wait we start talking about we that get, movie. Yeah, so that's right a three-hour podcast. podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Here's our five-part po- five episode. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Serenity, the film, part six. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Hopefully you were able to be a part of the live tweet. If you don't know about the live tweet, I still don't know how. That's a thing we mention it every single week. It happens on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central. Uh, you can follow along with that using the hashtag MFShindig over on Twitter. If you want to get in touch with all of us on Twitter, you can get in touch with me at Elsa Grab the Salt. I'm Lizbeth Ray, 555. I'm at Fleshy there, and you can hear more of me from the Graphomania Podcast Network at graphocast.com, G-R-A-P-H-O-C-A-S-T.com. And I'm at Paper Bullets. You can find out more about me over on alistairstevens.com. Excellent. That's Stevens with a PH, right? It sure is. Excellent. Mm-hmm. The British way of doing it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you want to follow all of us on Twitter, uh, you can follow us at Common Room Cast on Twitter. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Common Room Cast. If you enjoy the show, if you want to support us, if you want to help us do more things like this. Um, Sarah, I do. What should I do? Yeah. What should? <laughs> let me tell you what you can do. For First of all, tell us what you want us to do our next show over for because we, you know, Mighty Fun Shindig is going to end soon, and so we're going to need oh, another show to do. It hurts my heart to think um, about. I say soon; it's going to be like two months. I, I need all day. of you out there to come up with ideas and reasons for me to stay podcasting with Sarah and Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So suggest that to us. Send that our direction. Let us know what you think. Um, if you like this thing, if you want to support us, help us continue to do more shows. All you got to do is go over to Patreon.com/slash Common Room Radio, where you can kick us a dollar a month or whatever you can afford, and we'll send you a postcard and you'll get to hear all of the bloopers from all of uh, the Mighty Fine Shindig episodes which are hysterical and amazing and involve me saying the F word a whole lot so (laughs) there's that who doesn't want to hear that everyone wants to hear that um, I think that is based- oh you can also email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com if you have um, your own thoughts that are not uh, uh, that are too big for 144 characters over right. on Twitter so do that thing and I think that is basically it so thank you guys so much again I'm Sarah Kate Bazant. I'm Liz Stevens I'm Vinton Bain I'm Alistair Stevens and this is something the captain has to do for himself no it's not oh <laughs> 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 Sounds good.